Hi, my name is Paul Offord and today I'm going to look at using Wireshark to diagnose a USB issue. I've never really got into USB and I know very little about it, so this was quite an interesting learning experience. The problem I'm looking at is this one, that I have a, a radio, which I'll show you in a second. Um, it's an amateur radio for um, the HF bands and uh, also 50 megahertz actually. And I'm experimenting with using some digital modes, in particular this one called JS8, which is a weak signal propagation uh, digital mode. So you should be able to get the signal through to uh, another similarly equipped station with very poor uh, radio propagation conditions. This is the problem I get, that intermittently it throws this error, rig control error. The frequency varies a lot. So sometimes it happens immediately, sometimes it takes several attempts to make it happen at all. Now let's have a look at the uh, setup that I have. So I just have my PC over here on the left. It's running this uh, software that you just saw called JS8 Call. It communicates with uh, the radio through an open source library called Hamlib. In fact, JS8 Call is open source as well, by the way, but Hamlib gives a normalized version of the interface to various radios. So it handles all the different um, variants. Then we have a driver, um, a Silicon Lab driver called SI Lab SER. That presents us with a COM port, COM3. And that COM3 gives us serial communication right through to the ICOM um, IC7200 on the right hand side which is the uh, transceiver that I'm using. As you can see the connection between the two is a USB cable. So this is serial activity over USB into the ICOM. Let's take a look at what happens when the problem occurs. So I've rebooted the PC and restarted the transceiver, the ICOM transceiver. And we start up Wireshark and I need bus 3, USB bus 3. I'll explain a bit about USB buses later. Um, I wasn't able to figure out how to determine the USB bus through device manager or anything. Uh, and in the end I did it with trial and error. But you'll see why in my case it was quite easy to figure out. And that was because of... If I use this package, USB Device Viewer, which you can download from Microsoft, um, it shows all the buses and you can see that I have three buses. Um, they're given by the host controllers. So if you look at the host controller, there are three host controllers, which means there are three buses. And I only have devices on one bus. Now it turns out that that is bus three. And if you try tracing on the other two buses, you get no output at all. So you can see that I've got lots of devices on there. There we go with um, starting the radio. Now you can see that I've got this additional device just appeared on bus 3 and I've got a Silicon Labs UART uh, device um, which is a serial to USB bridge and it was USB device 7 so I'm going to put in 7 into a filter term. I'll explain this filter term uh, later. Here's the device coming online and we can check that it's the right device and there it is. It's a UART bus CP210 something. Okay, so we've got the thing tracing now. So let's start JS8 call. And what we'll do is we will send out a call which uh, in amateur radio terms you call a CQ. Um, so we send out uh, a call from my uh, call sign. Now that it transmits in 15 second blocks, so you'll notice that when I hit CQ, it didn't actually start transmitting. You can see the transmit appears in the uh, red block at the top of the, um, the application. And also, when we do it next time, if you watch the transceiver picture, you'll see that a little uh, TX appears in the top left hand corner of the, um, of the transceiver display. So it's not giving a problem at the moment, so we'll, uh, we'll go again. So we click the button, you can see the send is queued. You've got that green send ready thing in the uh, middle 
and that would go red as it does the send and if you now look at my transceiver top left hand corner you'll see that a TX has appeared in the top left so it's doing the transmission and once again that doesn't seem to have given a problem so while I'm trying that let's explain um, the some of the things uh, in the addressing so I said that um, if you if you watch the um, packets whizzing past in the Wireshark trace you'll see it says 3.70 and 3.71 uh, so it's bus 3 device 7 and then there are two endpoints on that device one is 0 and the other is 1 0 is a control so, sort of like out of band control uh, port and uh, 1 is the actual data here I'm trying to change the frequency so if you watch I click there it changes in the window for the JS8 and if you look down at the transceiver you'll see that the frequency has changed I'm going to change it back now back to the 10 meter band uh, so JS8 um, if you're transmitting using JS8 by convention you usually transmit on 28.078 megahertz so we're sending out another CQ So that one's completed okay, uh, still no sign of a problem. Uh, we're sending again. Aha, now you can see that the cat symbol on the left has gone amber. Um, that's usually the sign that the problem's about to occur, and there it is. Okay, so um, at that point we'll stop and uh, in the next video I'll do the analysis.